We met in 2015 on Instagram. I loved him so much that my heart physically hurt. Like when I, I'm not even joking. Like you, you have different websites that you can go on. You look so like oh my god in the background. <laughs> it's literally like Tinder. It's for, mad. It's crazy. It took a long time for us to feel comfortable. Like even just sitting like this. Today on the podcast, I've got Caitlin and Leah. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Even though I'm in your house. <laughs> we're excited to be on the podcast. Yeah, you should be saying excited. welcome to me, really. We should really. Welcome to our house on your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted to talk to you too, obviously, because <laughs> we're such good friends yeah. since I started this. But um, we haven't had the chance yet, but I'm glad that we could come here mm. and have a discussion about your lives and our lives, really, because I feel like if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be where we are right now. The agency I mean, wouldn't be I feel get. like it's such a team, like yeah. such a teamwork. We were saying, we was it yesterday on, on the shoot, that our lives have changed so much in the last couple of years. Mm, so much. It's crazy. We both had no baby. No baby. We've both moved house. Mm -hmm. Got Ma married. married. We Got weren't married, married either no. when we started. No. I think what was good about you two is and this is, doesn't go for all creators, you had quite a normal, I call it sleeping pattern. Like you would always wake up mm. early in the morning. Yeah. yeah so I think true. that anybody who doesn't usually do that and then has a baby, oh, that that's would be a big, so hard. big shot. Oh. And we're kind of like old grannies. So we would go to bed early anyway. Yeah. So we're yeah. kind of like, we were ready for Oakley. We're like we kind were of already ready. doing his, his routine. routine. Yeah. Yeah. How's we he sleeping? Ready. He's doing good. You're he's, really good at the night feeds. So yeah, so I do the the feed before he goes to sleep, and mm. it's he does go to sleep kind of late for a baby. So we start it. We try to get him to sleep at half eight, but usually it's between half eight and ten that he'll go to sleep. <laughs> and then he had he did sleep through the night for I think it was four or five nights in a row, yeah. which was amazing. And then we bragged about it, <laughs> and then we realised yeah. that That's we had his injections, yeah. and then it went backwards. So, but he's still only waking up once in the night. And then last yeah. night he slept until five a.m. So That's yeah. really good. he's doing really. We're good. really really happy because Amy has loads of friends who like um, friends that she's met through having a baby, like parent groups, and mm. so many of them haven't got that sorted yet wow. and they're yeah. waking up all throughout the night and I don't know how they do it I don't know how they do it it is really we were yeah. we were saying the other day we take our hats off to single parents oh That's my god parents that have to go we're so lucky that we're able to work mm. from home we wouldn't do it together yeah. yeah we were never like we literally left that shoot thinking we are so lucky we mm. get to go home and that's like yeah. a one-off sort of thing mm. Yeah, people that go to work nine to five job mm. every single day. I don't, yeah, like, I just, have especially out. single parents, like mm. you say. I don't know how single parents, they are incredible. To just like with us to get something done, it's like such a task because, but we're so lucky because one of us can look after Oakley yeah. and the other yeah. one can do it. But like, if you're by yourself, like, how do you get anything done? Even just going to the toilet. Do you yeah. Think, do you think it's in it? <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny you say that because the amount of times that I come home and the door's open and Amy's on the toilet with Sophia on her knee. <laughs> Like, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's, that's literally us. Like, yeah. He's been asleep before and I think you were downstairs doing mm. something. So I'm literally carrying him, doing a wee and like, it's such a, <laughs> yeah. it's such a struggle. And I think it's so hard. Like, it's just, uh, we take our Wait till he starts moving around and you've got to be like. I know, I can imagine. Oh my God. Going back to, I, I want to talk about everything throughout yeah. your life. Yeah. So how did you meet? So we met in 2015 on Instagram. Um, we both were suffering with um, eating disorders and our mental health. And there was like a community on there where mm. people would um, like post photos of their food and everyone would encourage mm. each other to like get better, and recover and stuff. Mm. So Leah one day posted on Instagram saying, oh, um, does anybody live in Essex and that would like to meet up? And um, I think you actually messaged me and said, do you want to meet up? Like, I think mm. you knew I lived in Essex or something. Yeah, and, I did. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's, yeah. Yeah. And then I um, said, yeah. And then we went to Westfields. Uh, we met up in Westfields in London. And that's, yeah, pretty much how, how you met. We how clicked, we met. honestly, straight we away. Straight like, away. Like, I, first sight immediately. I remember, like, literally, we, we met and we already arranged to wear the same outfit. Yeah. Because you've like, been doing that since then. Yeah. yeah why did we no. do that? Because I said, right. you, I said, what should I wear? And you said, said wear dungarees and I was like oh but I feel a bit self-conscious and you were like oh, yeah. oh wear it as well oh yeah oh so, so that's how it started yeah. and yeah. I remember we were in the queue in Nando's yeah. and um Caitlin everyone because it was the first time I met everyone but Caitlin you met everyone and I was mm. like okay oh, Caitlin I'll sit next to you and you were like this to me stay back so we sit together yeah and we, we only together. and we only just met 
Yeah, it was literally such a click straight away. We literally just clicked straight away. Oh, and then when did you start TikTok? Oh, it Not was, straight away, oh, right? No, it was no. November, your birthday yes. in 2019. I actually hated TikTok at the beginning. I I feel like every so many creators say that. They say they got on it because somebody else, maybe in their family, was yeah, using it or something Yeah, it was my like little that. cousin. Oh, yeah. really? But, so we just started when we went on holidays. And um, I was like to Caitlin, I, I can't, because I hated being on camera. Yeah. I hated anything to do with that. And then Caitlin was like, well, let's just do it for the memories. So we literally just did it mm. for memories. We didn't try to have a following no. or anything. No, no. And that, then- That's such a, like, yeah. a common story of so many creators that I've been speaking to, even on the podcast, who did it by, not accident, yeah. but they posted just for posting's sake and then yeah. it just blew up. Yeah. So did yours blow up straight away? I think it was like the fourth or fifth video we posted. I remember mm. actually what happened. We we went to Harry Potter Studios with Connor. I think it was for his birthday. I don't remember this. Yeah, we did. Oh, it was Christmas time. It must have been. Yeah. We went to Harry Potter Studios. And first, oh yeah, it was Christmas time because we went to see Elf in like a hidden we cinema. Went to see Elf. Oh, oh yeah, the film. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went to Harry Potter Studios after. Yeah. And I remember looking at our phone and we were like, oh my gosh, it's on 50K views. And then it kept going up and up yeah. and up. And it was that. What video was it? Take a look at my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And the little wiggle down. Yeah. yeah. And then it just started growing ever since. Ever since yeah. then. I think it kind of inspired us to actually post more. And yeah. then it started to. But we, we, there was one point up till, I think we had Oakley. We'd done it every single day. Mm. We posted every single day. Do you day. think that was the key in the beginning? To make sure you were being consistent? I think yeah. so, yeah, to like post every single day. Because even I, now it's what, three times a day, every day? No. No. Not anymore. No. I thought you posted. At three one times. point it was three times a day, but now we do lockdown, once a day. It was three times mm. a day. Really? Mm. Yeah. I I was convinced that you were still posting three times a day. No. I'm a terrible manager. No. <laughs> yeah, you should know <laughs> that. I should yeah. know no. that. You don't watch I our should, videos. I, no. I do. What, I was do that, what was our latest video? The one Part of on the one you posted that we posted together. Um, so at the beginning, did you know that you can make money out of TikTok? No. Did you ever think that it was going to be a career? No. When I mean, we knew that like you could make money out of YouTube mm. and yeah. things like that. And that there were, there was such a thing as making money. Out of and did you go on life. YouTube when you started TikTok? No. no. We already had YouTube from 2015 because we would post, when we'd go on holiday, we'd video I've seen, it. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've yeah. seen those videos. Yeah. I'm all to holiday. So yeah. that was pretty much, um, yeah. The only time yeah. we would post on there, but no, we didn't know it would make Everyone, money. Yeah, and when we told our family, they were like, "What?" Yeah, like people did not believe mm. it. Didn't what they? was it like that first time that you got paid to do a TikTok? Well, to be fair, you did have an ins. You 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 were quite big on Instagram. Did you ever get paid on Instagram? I think I got paid like five pounds once for for um like promoting a book or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember you used to have, um, when we first signed you, you had a notepad. Yeah. Like a notebook. Yeah. And I remember like you, you sent us a screenshot of it to like show us what your fees were. Yeah. And I remember reading some of them and I was like, cause you were still quite yeah. big at that time. Yeah. But we did, we didn't know any, like any no. better. Did no, we? we didn't really know how it all worked or anything. I still no. don't think a lot of creators know how I think how it, it depends no. on your management Massively. As well. And mm. just education about, and talking to other creators. Mm. Yeah. But a lot of creators don't really want to talk about it. No. No. Well, there's a, there's a, yeah, oh, yeah. There, there's you some, kind of can't. there's some, well, there's, there's that, that you, well, you shouldn't be talking about mm. it because there's loads of confidentiality agreements. Yeah. But there's some creators that we found that lie about what they're earning as well. They'll be like, That's oh, crazy. we're earning Why? X, but they're not actually earning that. Yeah. I don't oh, know. to you. Yeah. I don't know if oh. it's just like a bragging. So then they want you to sort of outdo that. Yeah, exactly. Mm, yeah. And, then and then we actually go speak to the brands and they're like, we paid them this. Oh. Yeah. And it's like. Yeah. So how long did it take for you doing TikTok and doing social media before you were able to do it full time? You you were like to me all the time, Leah, leave Greg's. Do you mean, do you, oh, you were yeah. full time work? It yeah. took me a Because what were you lot, doing Greg's? I worked at Greg's Bakery and you were... Um, a charity, right? Yeah, and I was working. No, I was working for a charity, an eating disorder charity yeah. at the time. Mm. And you were at Greg's. And yeah. then um, I think it was about, it was, we we went full time when we joined you. Did? Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I, don't, I know the answer to this question, but yeah. <laughs> I remember it because I remember speaking to you and I yeah. remember very distinctly you were like, 
are we going to be able to afford mm. rent and mm. things like that? And yeah. we always say to people, we can't guarantee anything because yeah. you can't guarantee it. No, you can't. But we, I knew that you would be able to. I knew yeah. that you were going to just grow from that. Because when we signed you, how many did you have? I think we had less than a million. No, yeah. no, we hit a million. I, th- I, think no, it was a, I think it was around a million. I think it was one point some early millions. Really? Yeah. Because I, I remember quite early on, you had, you hit three million. There was one point where we were gaining 100K every week. Do you remember? Yeah, there was a point. But we hit three million after right. Tokfest. Was it after Tokfest? The first So Tok that Fest. would have been in like the March of 2021. Yeah. Mm. No, 2020. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But it, I, I honestly left Greg's and I said to my manager, because I'm still friends with him, I was like, Dan, if I ever need a job back, please just take mm. me back because yeah. I was so scared to... Yeah. It's so common yeah. among creators, though, who tell their families. Mm. They just don't understand. No. And I get no. it. Like, mm. why would you think that people would get paid that, like, get paid anything yeah. Yeah. To, to make videos on TikTok? It's true. We're very I lucky. feel like people don't understand that it's kind of like ads that you see on the TV. It's kind of a bit Same like that, thing, isn't yeah. it? Were your parents nervous when you told them? Um, mine was. I don't think mine was. I think no. mine was quite... She kind of understood it more. I feel like we spoke to my mum about it quite a lot. So she kind of understood anything. it more. Yeah. Whereas your mum didn't really know. But but before, like, I've always been quite anxious. So I had mm. loads of jobs before Greg's. And I was like, make one mistake and I'd leave. I just wouldn't come back. So I had this job. <laughs> it's, like, it's really well, bad. You can go. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I had Greg's. Like, do you remember? Like, the dry yeah. cleaners and everything. So I had Greg's. And I was there for, like, five years mm. and, like, I, I was like training to like be senior sales and everything. And my mum, I think my mum was worried that it would like knock my anxiety back to then like mm. get another job. Mm. But yeah, I mean, we're, is it two years later? It's two years later. Well, and since, I haven't asked Dan for my job back. Oh, since you, since you signed? Since yeah. we left, since I left Greg. Signed since 20, left April Greg's 21. Yeah. April so, the yeah. 1st, 2021. Yeah, yeah my birthday. April, your birthday, birthday and April Fool's Day. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to say what you did on April Fool's or? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so for everybody listening and watching, Leah is a huge Peter <laughs> massive, Andre, massive, massive Peter Not Andre anymore. Fan. You oh, are. No, if you're Where watching this, Where did the love of him Pete? come from first though? Do you know what? I don't know. I don't actually <laughs> know. It I, think, been, I think it was his programme. He was on... Um, I'm a celeb, wasn't he? Yes. No, it wasn't then. I think it was when he was doing Kate and Pete. <laughs> oh, what, the afterwards? Oh, the, like, yeah, yeah, the yeah they met on that, yeah. didn't they? But I loved him so much that my heart physically hurt. Like, when I, I'm not even joking, like... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really weird. I love you. No, that sounds really weird. I love you. You don't say that about me. I do. I text you when you're sort of saying pump and I say, Kate, I'm in love with you. Yeah, Aww. but you don't go, oh, my heart hurts. Well, that's a bit, <laughs> that a icky, bit weird. But I do always text you so long. I don't say I love you. I say I'm in love with you. But okay. with him, like, I see him on the TV and I was like, my heart. I don't know what it was. Now I can honestly say I've got no... F- I mean, I love you, Pete, if you're ever watching. Okay. But now, I don't, you're saying this, but I texted Kate and Anaya on... Uh, on April Fool's Day saying that he'd reached out about management and photoshopped the whole thing. <laughs> oh my and gosh. And you lost it. You we were, were like, so no, excited. stop. Well, I thought, well, I can see him at the Christmas party yeah. and I can like talk to him, maybe tell him. But then I thought maybe not because it might be a bit weird. Tell him that your heart hurts. But also, yeah, that I think, would be so weird. I thought I was quite proud of you guys because obviously oh. you were signing Peter Andre. Yeah. So I'd love to that try. would I'd be love to, If he's listening now, I'd love to manage him just to exactly. put you in touch. You can like, do some videos. His daughter is now. His daughter, yeah. Princess, follows yeah. us. Oh, oh really? Leah, yeah, Leah got so excited when she followed us. You were like fangirling. Because she's doing oh. a bit of TikTok, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she she signed. Don't don't know, know. But, oh, that could be it. Well, do you want to tell what you did to us on April I might have yeah. to. Oh, that oh, one. Yeah. Go on. So we pretended that we had been uh, contacted by another management and that we were going to leave. And my heart hurt when you said <laughs> that. When it dropped. Even though I know you're joking. It would. Yeah, no. I think it would just be so... It, we would never be able to go to another management no, ever. Cheers, never. Thanks, it thanks. actually annoys us if another management... Mm reaches out yeah, when it like, shouldn't just leave us alone yeah. it's part and parcel though of mm. the industry isn't it and and we've had it before where management have reached out or when we actually a better example is we've reached out to creators before and management mm. have been like please don't reach out really and i get it because mm. yeah. you know you don't want my thing is if if your creators are happy with you mm. it'll have the same relationship like this but is it like competitive in the industry is it really yeah like constantly people are trying to poach each other yeah but i actually that. think that's fair game because mm. again if yeah. you're doing a good job 
they're not gonna want to leave not yeah. gonna want to leave and, yeah. they'll, and they'll politely say i'm happy with my manager just like you two do mm. yeah and then it's fine the, the the thing that is annoying when management keep trying and keep yeah. trying so we don't mm. we don't do that no we just say like cool well mm. i hope nobody in my team does that i don't mm. think yeah. they do um mm. going back to tiktok why do you think you've been so successful like what's the secret sauce about why your oh, we're gonna have different answers do you think? Yeah. I feel like, honestly, it's it's so hard to say. I feel like part of it is luck, mm. but then also we have worked really, really hard with like mm. posting and like getting on trends yeah. and yeah. just kind of trying to be like our authentic selves mm. and show like, I don't know, just try and like show people that it's okay to be in a same sex yeah. couple and like mm. sharing our like journey, like our IVF journey and everything. Yeah. And just kind of I think sometimes we've been like vulnerable. Like when we You're used to be, we used that. to be way more. We used to talk about our mental health so much more, mm. and that got so much hate that we just we yeah. haven't done that. Is anymore. that why you stopped doing it? So yeah. Much? yeah, people would be really like, even to this day. Isn't that crazy people? though? Like you were spreading such a good message, and then people can do that. And yeah. I want to get on to like the documentary we did mm. later, but mm. it's crazy to think that you two with such yeah. a big platform have stopped doing something so positive like we met that. through our mental health mm. like we we could always talk about our mental health like mm. we still suffer with some things and like, and like i was going to be a psychologist like mm. i really um mm. was like i like guess mental health was like such a big thing yeah. in our lives obviously yeah but it's sad that we feel we have to protect our mental health now because people uh have been yeah. really quite nasty about just it just because we're trying to spread awareness yeah i think it's quite it's a horrible thing to hear but it's also quite a comforting thing to hear from for other people listening that you two who are so happy about putting yourselves online with such a big audience mm. still feel that anxiety oh i every time i'm so bad when we post a video if we get one hate comment i freak out mm. i say okay then we have to delete it yeah you do i re i really struggle with the hate. do you still Even, read the comments constantly? yeah constantly. we do we read the comments because we like to respond to people yeah. we don't like to just like post a video and then just not yeah. answer but so it's we, hard yeah. not to read the com read the hate comments how do you get through responding to so many comments are you just on your phone all day we kind of try and not all day no. but we just have like sections of the day where we just go on our phone yeah. if we're not it's doing like, anything if they're taking the time out of their day to watch our video and comment of course you can't mm. reply to every comment but, but we want to let people know that you know we really appreciate yeah. them and we're reading us. it yeah, yeah. Because without them, we wouldn't be where we are today. Right. And that exactly. is the bottom line, isn't it? The reason why I said about consistency earlier, and I think the secret to your success is that, and I tell everybody this, there is no creator that I know, and granted, I don't manage every creator in the world, <laughs> but there's no creator I know that works as hard as you two. Like, yeah. you, There's nobody that turns around content as quickly as you two. There's nobody that... <laughs> like again wakes up so early and goes mm. to bed late and just makes videos all day i remember yeah. distinctly there was a conversation that you or the three of us had and maybe amy was in it as well and we were saying do you think you're still going to make tiktoks when you're just like 40 and yeah. maybe you've got no platform yeah. and you were like yeah we love it yeah and in that moment i just knew like that's the yeah. secret to it you've got to love it the thing yeah. is if we don't do it for a day i actually miss it mm, same it just feels wrong doesn't it, it See, does. that's, that's, the, that's yeah. the key because it some is. creators are like oh, can't make content no, and we always yeah. tell people just whether it's on trend or not make the content that you, you love have, yeah, yeah that's it's true. not you, you're never yeah. gonna compete really like for example we used to make like prank videos and stuff like mm. we would prank each other but um we don't really enjoy filming those kind of videos and i feel like we've grown up like yeah, yeah. It, we, we sort of transitioned up, yeah transitioned and i think that's that's okay i feel like a lot of people want to stay in the same thing and if you enjoy it that's completely okay mm. but i feel like definitely do what you enjoy because yeah. if you're not enjoying it what's the point in like doing our it? prank yeah. videos probably have done the best mm. but we still stop them because we yeah. didn't really enjoy doing them and we don't have time to prank each other no that much, <laughs> we don't no, it's prank <laughs> so. me and amy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on april fools <laughs> it's um it's true though that your content's changed over time as you've got older but as your yeah. life's changed and what i love about it is that i think a lot of creators think if i change my content i'm going to lose my following mm. yeah your following's grown and changed mm. like you've still grown over time even though you've started to talk about your marriage yeah. and IVF mm. and having a baby and being a parent mm. and I think that's really positive were you quite nervous about sharing I guess your marriage story first of all like sharing anything um, about that marriage no no what I about feel baby like baby yes babe go on you say why baby I just feel like being a, like I really we, we decided that we wanted to share our journey because obviously 
I would love to watch someone yeah. same sex couple because I think it's really inspiring. Yeah. It shows people that you can do it. Mm. Um, and there's not really many people out there that have gone through like, that have shared their journey of going through yeah. IVF online, like show all the different things. Yeah. So I feel like even before we started IVF, I had no idea what yeah. it even entailed. Like, no. I didn't know. I've learned so much yeah. just from listening to you two and understanding about it. Like, yeah. I think it's great that you shared your story. But I feel like I was a bit scared because obviously he's our son. Yeah. I don't want anyone to ever be mean to him. Yeah. Like he is our everything. When anybody says anything about Sophia, even like I was telling you that the gymnastics oh, yeah. teacher mm. said something like, yeah. she's one of our heavier babies. I was like ready to like yeah. lose it with yeah. her. Yeah. So I can't imagine what people. And like the thing that hurts me like, most is when, well, not as much what it does still, is when people say, well, he's not yours. Mm. Well, he is mine. People say so that on people comments. say that all people the time. People say it all the time, and it's horrible. Well, when I first gave birth, and I read that, I'll just cry. Like, how can you say that? Like, I carried, you carried him for him. nine months. Exactly. But now I just think, like, just educate yourself. Exactly. But I think that's a good. You're talking about saying education. I think that's the best thing that you've done with your channels throughout yeah. the time. Because whether it was educating about same sex relationships, yeah. same sex marriage, now being same sex parents, mm. I think it's a great story. What was it like though, like showing, cause you showed quite a lot of the IVF process. Yeah, like we your, showed everything really. Your egg retrieval, everything. So we went into the hospital to um, get my egg retrieval and then we get there and I was on a medication for my heart mm. and they knew I was on this medication. Yeah. Like I told them I was on this medication. Yes. But when the anesthetist came in, she said um, they didn't know. So then she looked, she didn't know what this medication was herself. Like she hadn't really heard of it. So she looked up what it was about, like what mm. it was. And it comes up with heart failure. And I don't have heart failure. <laughs> and um, she God. wouldn't believe that no. like that it wasn't that serious and that mm. the heart condition I do have is like, it's like it would have been fine. So she I mean, was- it's still, it's still a heart condition, but it wouldn't have- in, It wouldn't have affected the, it. Yeah. So because yeah. she was too scared to go ahead with the procedure because of a mistake of the of the IVF um, place, um, she decided to, um, they were gonna, they said, you can't have the operation. Because you couldn't have the anesthesia. Because I couldn't have the anesthesia. So that means all the needles, all the injections. Like everything Any we'd have gone relief. through. Everything. Yeah. No, but it means like everything we'd, if I didn't go through with it, everything we'd gone through would have that been nothing. That past month. Of course. All of the do... injections, everything. I just find it and crazy you're going, how we got to that point. Yeah. Mm. And, you're, and like you're going there in the morning knowing that you're having your egg retrieval. Yeah. Like it was the most exciting thing. And as soon as she said it, we completely... We were just so like, So you text us in the morning, we're on our way. Mm. Then you text us going, we're not having it. Yeah. And then. And then. Caitlin being Caitlin <laughs> said, the, well, what can I do? Yeah. <laughs> so we went into like the manager's office and he sat us down because we were obviously very upset. Crying. And, it was and all kind the of, other people were there. And he said, well, there is a way we could do it. And that's if you have it with no pain relief, no anesthesia, nothing. And we just do the, like the egg retrieval but they with said, nothing. They said, but we don't recommend it. It's very it painful. It's the most painful thing. I'm surprised they even suggested it. Because it they is possible. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it could be Japan. S mm. Some country, they do it with nothing because for some reason they think it's better. God. So there is a way, like it is illegal mm. to do in everything, but yeah. they, they said you can do it. Against but it. we were also, you the night before or two nights before I had the egg retrieval, I have to take a trigger shot, which will make my eggs ovulate. Mm. And there's a certain time period that you can have the egg retrieval in and before your eggs ovulate. Yeah. So because we'd been waiting around, they said we could do that, go in, do it, and your eggs are already big be gone like they've mm. already ovulated and not be where they oh, should right, be okay. so it was 50 50 we kind of like ran into the operating room because i said i wanted to do it and they did it could and you have waited like a few days and then given you no a you oh, had yeah. to have it like i had to have it right there and then that's why i was so determined to do it because also if i didn't have it that day mm. i could have potentially never been able to have an egg retrieval because they could have just said we, mm. we're not going to give you an egg retrieval here yeah. because of the heart tablet so that could have been our only try but chance i feel like you're not it. saying just how brave you were like it was just saying it was so easy but there was like eight people in the room with her mm. they said and we're going to get every single staff member in mm. they said play your favorite song so i was singing to mm. you was it take me home no I they I said you put on a random song, song didn't you because really, I, I was scared for her to have it so yeah. although i was crying you i was were like crying like don't have it weren't you, you didn't well want i didn't want i i, 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 I well, you I knew it was going to be painful right I, obviously i wanted to have this baby but i yeah. wouldn't want my wife to be in this pain and they yeah. were saying like it it is 
painful. So Caitlin never shows her pain. So she was, I remember it so well. You were just like this. You had like half a smile and you were like, Mm, and like you were that. you were like I'll oh, keep talking to try and like um, distract yourself, but I could not speak. How, it was how painful worst. was it? It was like, the most painful thing I've ever had in my life. Really? Like it was so painful. It was literally mm. like. But from what Leah says, you were just. I I don't even know how I did it. I I cannot even believe it. But then when you were having it done, the person I don't know his name. Uh, like is he an embryologist? Em oh, Embryo em embryologist. Sorry, I can never say. It. <laughs> he was in the other room, and every time he saw an egg, he was like, "One egg, yeah. two yeah. eggs," and then like <laughs> it was it. Like I, know it sounds, <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but every time they said an egg. there was an egg, it was like the biggest relief. Yeah. It was just making it worth it. How many did you get in the end? Ten. That's amazing. And I hope Oakley eggs. watches this back and he knows mm. like how much mm. we wanted him, I mean, or how you, much you went through aw. to get. It's it's him. the 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 best story of somebody wanting a child ever. Mm. We were just so lucky work. though that it worked and we yeah. got Oakley and- So lucky. Cause if it didn't work or if I went in there and I got no eggs or like, you know, we went through the whole thing and none of them mm. fertilized and turned into embryos. I feel like it would have been a very traumatic experience. But it took you a while to get mm. over the, you were, you were very upset. It was, yeah, it was Because horrible. you should never have had to have done that. But I mean, we we have Oakley, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's that down to you it saying it. yes that time. Because I I was telling you not to. Mm -hmm. Worth every second of it. Definitely. Yeah. How did you decide who was going to carry the baby? So we actually decided wrong when we decided this. So <laughs> which, everything we say, it sounds like we're just like stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought because Leah's older, yeah. she should carry the baby. Because, yeah. you know, like they say, as you get older, it's less likely that you're able to yeah. carry. Um, but we found out that your egg age is what's more important. So really, mm. if we did it that way, I should have carried your egg first because you're older. Yeah. So, Got but you. Leah's always said she wanted to carry first. So yeah, we let. But now yeah, I'm going to. Why, why did you want to carry first? I've, ever since I was younger, I've just always wanted to be a mum and carry a baby. Yeah. And But so have I. But I just know that you were so like, I just want to carry first. So I just. Yeah. Knowing you two, I think that was definitely the right way around so that yeah. Caitlin could be like, yeah. it's going to be all right. No, yeah. Like when, when we did give birth, I, I, do you know what? I was always like, I'm not scared. Like I will be fine. Mm. A C-section scares me more. Like I'm going to give birth. I will have any medication they give me, but I'll yeah. be fine. And I broke down and I, I don't know what it was, but I honestly, when I was in that hospital, I thought, how am I going to get this baby outside of me? Mm -hmm. But that I've was a difficult so experience as well, life. wasn't it? Because you kept mm -hmm. having to go back and forth to the hospital, didn't you? When no, I had an induction. Oh, and that was it. It was awful for me personally. I mean, if you, if yeah. you have an induction, it can be okay. But for yeah. me... It was so painful. It was really hard. You you had a really tough time with it. My cervix was so high up and Oakley was so low. And when they were like inserting pessaries, they said it was the hardest one they've ever had to do. Really? There was two people and I was like, it sounds so crazy. I was biting on my toothbrush mm. with the pain. It was, it was so bad for you. Same time. But you did amazing. But I think knowing what you went through and how big Oakley was mm. when he actually came out. How big was he? How heavy was he? Nine, nine pound, pound one. one. I don't think you'd have been able to give birth to Oh that. my God. I would never have been able to give birth to No, to so Oakley. you were so brave doing the C-section. What's like I an average baby? Like, I think it's seven, seven. pounds. He was the biggest baby born that day. <laughs> he was. I mean, yeah. bearing in mind, he was born very early at nine fifty-six. I know, but still, that's a lot of babies in a day. No, it still. was the end of the day. At the end of the day, they Is said that what they said. They said he was the. Oh biggest yeah, they baby. came in that night. He's still big now, right? Like for his age. Huge. Yeah, he's. We we've um, got these two friends that also do social media, and they have mm. twin boys, and their oh, yeah. twin boys are six months old. Yeah. And Oakley weighs the same as them. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he's such a big boy. Do you reckon it's the food or what? Like, what is it? I, I mean, he is fed well. But yeah. He is fed well, but I think it's he. When we asked the midwife, they just said he was born big. Yeah, and he's, he's just still big. just good on the percentile. Mm. He's just. Yeah. Do you think you're going to keep sharing your story of being parents on your? Because I know that you're very, and I I would be the same again showing his face. But are you going to keep sharing your story of just parenthood on your social? Yeah, I think we definitely will. Going back to TikTok, do you think that, do you feel a responsibility mm. to be role models on the platform now? Now that you've got so many mm. followers and you've talked about such, because you've talked about same-sex marriage, same-sex mm. parents, mental health. You've talked about some big, big topics. Mm -hmm. Do you feel 
a sense of you've got to keep going and talking about it because you're now role models or do you not see yourself as that? I feel like we don't see ourselves as role models, but people expect us to be role models. Mm. Like they expect mm. us to make sure that we like act like role models and we say the right things and hold us at, like hold mm. us to a kind of a status that we have to say the right things and get mm. everything right. Whereas we're not perfect and we don't always get everything right. Mm. No, it's like impossible to. It is true, but I do think think we do have a responsibility. But we do have a responsibility, definitely. But yeah. we still just ourselves mm. like we're never going to say we're perfect because we're not mm. perfect at all and we do have a responsibility because we do have an amazing amount of followers mm, but we're cool. not yeah. perfect we're gonna make mistakes sometimes mm. i remember like we've had some opportunities to do some kind of you know documentary work about ivf and you mm. were both quite worried about sharing yeah. your ivf mm. story because of how difficult it is to get yeah. IVF. It, it's sad like we, we're so lucky we were yeah. so 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 lucky to have had Oakley the first time around yeah. but we understand that we were lucky yeah. and sadly people aren't so lucky and a lot of people that mm. do IVF is because they suffer with infertility mm. yeah. obviously same-sex couples do it as well but some people mm. um, most of the people suffer with infertility so it mm. it's hard for them sometimes to get pregnant even it could take like multiple multiple yeah. rounds of IVF I don't right. want people yeah, to loads. look at us and think oh it's easy it's mm. easy because mm. I don't want to like give the, that false hope to but someone but even your stories shows that it's not easy to like even what Caitlin no. went through I do think <clears throat> that um, same sex couples should get it on the NHS 100% I, well I've got um, a few friends who are gay and the two two guys and they say it's so difficult mm, for those yeah. two because they don't have a, a carrier so that must be so hard yeah. so he's he's the they're looking to do it privately but you're <clears> talking like it ranges when he tells me but it's anywhere from like 60 to 100 thousand pounds that's crazy because they have to get a surrogate oh, that, yeah, oh for my the surrogate. god that's crazy so he's like well we both work like okay jobs but to save up a hundred grand that's just before we've even had the money. baby and let alone all the expenses comes with the baby yeah. so yeah, I, I think that it should be way more accessible mm, on the NHS. Definitely. A hundred percent. It's, it, I think that needs to change. Massively. Definitely. Because it, it's, I think it's, I think you have to wait if you're in, um, if you're infertile, two years of trying or something mm, like that. Yeah, I might I be wrong so. before you get anything. Mm, it is crazy. Which is mad. It is it's crazy. crazy. And then a, a same sex couple, I don't think, wait, they, they don't They can just never all. get it. I know that there's mm. a couple uh, Megan and Whitney that are campaigning mm. for females to mm. get it mm. on the NHS. But I just think it should be more available for all mm. same-sex couples, single parents. I agree. Mm. I mean, we, we did inquire right at the beginning, didn't we? Yeah, and they said, no, it's no. not available. I mean, this was like years ago because we've always wanted to know. We've always wanted to be parents. Mm. So we just thought, do you know what? We, we'll ask. We honestly thought that we wouldn't be able to do it this way ever. Yeah. We thought that we'd have to Did do it. Did you think you'd be able to do it so quickly? Because this, <laughs> this is another funny story. Like I distinctly remember you texting us or we were talking about you potentially. I think doing it was a, in Nando's yeah, in London. Yeah, like having a baby or having IVF. And we were like, oh, cool. Like maybe like next year. And like <laughs> next <laughs> month, you were like, we're going through our treatment. And I was like, we're so impatient. That is us. To a team. Like, so impatient. Like, it's, it, the thing with you two, and I've, I've clocked it now, is once you make your mind up, there's no, no changing yeah. it, mm. but there's also no delay. Yeah. You're like, we need it now. Yeah. See, we said that we're going to have my egg retrieval in six months, and then we're like, and then we're going to do the transfer in six months after that. And I'm like, okay, then let's be realistic. We're probably going to have the transfer straight after. Yeah. yeah. This uh, is oh, for baby number two. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you've got those, yeah, as soon as you've got those eggs, over. you're going for it. Because when we when we first did the egg retrieval, we we was not expecting to do the transfer so soon. No, because our our actual <laughs> whole thing was we were just going to do my egg retrieval so that we have it in the freezer and yeah. can do it whenever we want but yeah. we did not wait we didn't no. wait at all and then when we told our parents everyone was so shocked because we've never we never said it to them because we didn't know ourselves no. did you, but that's just how long us. did you wait to tell your parents that you were pregnant so we were gonna wait yeah. um a while like to keep up that like you know to make it a big surprise we waited six days <laughs> no we waited we that told my mum the day because she was in the house with us we were and then excited. we waited six days with your mum yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were so we just could not hold we were it so in excited. what's the um what's the best thing about being a parent that you didn't oh. think of before you got pregnant uh, mine's just in i know it sounds so boring 
But my best thing is just seeing him smile mm. yeah. when he starts talking and he looks at us on his little changing mat and he just smiles and he lifts his leg up and he's just, mm. he's just so happy. Yeah, yeah, just like the cute little things that he does. Like he literally mm. now he's learned to lift his legs up when you're changing his nappy. Like himself, he lifts them up ready. Okay. And it's just so cute. Just everything he does is yeah. so cute. To anyone watching that, they probably think like, that's just so silly. But mm. to yeah. us, like those that's little things. Thing. Every little thing he does, yeah. yeah. And just watching him grow and change every day and yeah. learn new things it's just amazing when when you know when you two got together and you realized right it's going to be more difficult for us two to have kids do you think did you think like it was going to be did you ever think you were going to have kids knowing that I we used to cry to you about yeah that. we thought it was going to be really hard we thought yeah. that we were going to have to do it like honestly some kind of like dodgy way <laughs> some like really like cheap yeah. way no but I remember in like 2016 mm. we were on the phone call and I was crying saying I really want to be a mum mm. we're never going to be able to afford this like we used to really mm. like get upset mm. about it like mm. yeah. genuinely because it's so expensive yeah. it's so expensive yeah. it's so expensive we're, we're just lucky that we even like um so like I feel like the I think the cheapest way to do it with like a clinic or anything would be to get donor sperm and then to have an insemination and just mm. to order sperm is a thousand pounds over a thousand pounds which is I'm so expensive i'm astonished about how the sperm ordering takes place it's literally like tinder it's for, mad it's crazy it's so like what do you do like for anyone so, that doesn't know so you you have different <laughs> websites that you can go on you look so like oh my god in the background <laughs> <laughs> you have this is crazy you have different websites you can go on and on the website um you can put in like what you're looking for like you know um hair color eye color whatever you want mm. and then the people will come up and it's all like little profiles you can hear their voice you can um they tell you that their hobbies you handwriting get, right yeah handwriting so um they tell you why they want to be a donor um literally like everything that you could want to know about mm. somebody their parents um health history mm. yeah just literally everything it's crazy, crazy. It and they have crazy. like a little like bio and everything how did you decide which donor you wanted then like oh, what, what was like there was the big debates on that what was one. like the three or four main things you were like yep they need to have this because i'm sure like messy handwriting wasn't no wasn't one no of them. they had to look like me we wanted them to look like leah a little well, i mean they're not gonna look like me but they had to have <laughs> similar features similar yeah, like, features i think oakley looks very like you do you think yeah you're the fourth person to have said honestly that. <laughs> No, I genuinely, <laughs> really? I obviously think he looks yeah. like you. He looks yeah. so, image he's, of like, Even, you know, the, the 4D scan that you got, I was yeah. like, well, that's Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. But he does look like you. So, he, so you needed him mm -hmm. to look like you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just to like have, be a kind person mm -hmm. and kind of have good morals. And Did you care about things like height? No, no. we didn't look at the I'm height. Glad. Till after. As a then. short guy, I'm Well, glad. I feel like Oakley's probably going to be around your height. Sure. <laughs> you were saying that very <laughs> negative. Oh, like, oh, it's, gonna it's be a good thing. High. But we didn't look at height because no. we looked after and we, we were like, oh, we didn't realize that he was actually uh, quite small. He, the donor's five, six. Five, your height, five, seven. But, but we were oh, very. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm taller than that. <laughs> That's why I'm that. hoping you'll be your yeah, height. Okay, right, <laughs> okay. But we were, um, we did show our fa family a lot of donors and we were very, like, I like some donors, you didn't like some donors. It wasn't just like easy, just, oh, this is easy. the one. Because obviously it's a big decision. Mm. And We've then you're family involved. Buy, buy sperm. Yeah, buy mm. sperm and then it's shipped over yeah. in a freezer tank. Like a yeah. Was that quite worrying? Um, In what way? Just Like to worrying in terms of like waiting for it to be shipped. It was. It was like, it was more it exciting, I think. Mm. That's a loaded question because I've got an amazing story about, so you know Amy's IVF? Yeah. yeah. Amy's sister's boyfriend, Jake, is IVF and they yeah. both got made in Bourne Hall, which is like the first IVF place in the UK. Oh, wow. They, they invented it there. But um, his mum and dad, I think at the time they had like a really... They they didn't have a ton of money to 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 make Jake, mm, and yeah. they had to move his sperm from one place to another. And they had this. And his dad Dick tells such a funny story. They had a really rickety car, and they had a like an ice cooler with the sperm in oh, it. My gosh. And they had it plugged into the cigarette lighter, and he kept having to like hold it to keep it on. Oh, and they were like, my. "If we don't get there to get it into the oh, freezer, no. like we're going to lose Jake." What a story. I know. Yeah. So that's, that's why I said when you we worried about it getting delivered, like how times have changed. Oh, because yeah. it, 
God, but we, la- we laugh because Jake and Gemma, Amy's sister, got made in the same place and wow. now they're together. Amazing. Mad. Fate. I was like, you could be brother and sister. Can you imagine? That is crazy. That's crazy. Did you watch that program though about um, this man? The, you, I can never explain it. I'm not even going to start. You know that yes. program we watched with this doctor and he has there, like... There was a doctor. Yeah. Awful. He, uh, in awful. Indiana, America. And yes. he, it, he, was he was using in, his own yes. sperm. Yeah. And he said the reason is that when he was younger, he, he ran over a kid and he killed them. Oh, really? I never knew that. Yeah, it's in, it's in the documentary. He ran, he ran the kid over and he either killed them or he ser- seriously like, hurt them. And it was his way of like giving back to reap because he knew he had very fertile sperm. <laughs> but, like, really no. back. Oh my back. god! No. <laughs> Apparently, he never really apologized for it. He's still, That's he's terrible. still about. Like he's still, he's still, he's he still. He didn't even go to prison. No. That's Why? Terrible. At least like when the documentary, maybe he is now and not the documentary. That's out, just awful. You would think imagine, that would be illegal. Imagine it's someone thinking be. they're the father of the child or whatever and no, they're not. It's some of them it's 18 years later after it's raising, crazy. and listen, you love the kid no matter mm, what, but raising them and then finding out that would yeah. be terrible. it's not your child. That's, I did, I did, that is one thing I did worry about that they would like mix the sperm or send the wrong sperm. Oh yeah, sperm. you said that Can quite a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, actually, that must happen. Yeah. It must happen. It's like human error. Just like, oh, we, yeah. You know, like sometimes you get the wrong ASOS order. Mm, yeah. Like it's the same but thing. Could you imagine? Is it though? Though? Oh my God, can you imagine? It would be, I mean, it, we would still you would never know. No, though, would it, you? no, it wouldn't matter, but it's it's just the fact that you. After all that, all like, of the picking of the donor. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> yeah. You get a really tall person with really yeah. good handwriting. There's a lot of donors that you thought looked like my dad. Do you remember? There was, yeah, there that was. That would be interesting if he, looks, <laughs> if he looks like grandma um, paul yeah you're like no not this one it looks like your dad <laughs> no um one thing that i really want to talk to you about is how you navigate negativity online i know we were talking mm. about a minute ago that you read the comments when you do read those comments and they say those horrible things mm. i know you said you cry but like how do you how- i don't cry i don't cry i used to be upset but i don't but they, they I affect don't cry. you yeah but how do you process it and what's your advice to people who get hate online well when we did that documentary yeah. we we found out because we actually spoke to a hater yeah so mm-hmm. we found out that they do it because they are kind of like projecting their own problems onto you like yeah. like they feel so bad about themselves and what they're going through that they kind of take it out on you well, they were saying i think um the person who who we interviewed said that they were saying it to themselves they were saying yeah. like, you'll mm-hmm. never be a real woman mm. which is just great like it's really very very eye-opening yeah it really no, makes ha- you yeah. sorry it really makes you feel like sorry for them More in a sorry, way yeah. yeah no happy person sends hate that's it if you're happy you're not gonna send hate to someone no. you're just not you mm. someone can argue and say yes that's yeah. not true but it is true mm. no happy mm. person will take the time out of the day to send someone hate no mm. what would you, your advice be then for people that get hate and it's really really affecting them to definitely reach out and speak mm. to people because yeah. speaking about it definitely makes it yeah a lot better yeah. and um to try and like not take it to heart or like mm. realize that what they're saying isn't isn't actually about you like no. it's you know who you are yeah. and what they're saying is just sadly what they're probably saying to themselves or just them trying to bring other people down yeah. and yeah definitely mm. i think reaching out is a big one like mm. we did the um we did the documentary of Ditch the Label, mm-hmm. who have great, great forums and mental yeah. programs and all kinds of resources that you can use. Because mm. if you suffer in silence, that's the worst thing. Yeah, definitely. I think the best thing is to reach out. That is the best advice because sitting with it, it's going to eat you up. You're going to yeah. overthink things. Yeah. You're never alone. There's always someone out there to help yeah. and mm. to listen. Even if you feel alone, you're not, you're not alone. And if you, even if you think no one cares, people yeah. do care. Mm. Do you think the, um, the social media platforms do a good job of stopping hate i'd like to say so but i don't think no, so they don't what do you think they could do differently like there's two people mm. that live on mm. social media mm. who know it inside out like what is the well, what is a I feel solution like social media is so clever that like mm. i'd say one one thing that would be good for them to do is obviously be able to stop the hate comments like have mm. some sort of filter that just stops them but then that doesn't stop the problem no like no. the problem is the people that are sending it mm. so i feel like if they maybe even even if they had like a pop-up 
So if somebody went to post a hate comment, they'd have a pop up like, "Are you sure That's you want to post idea. this?" That is really good. Like we've noticed that you're sending and a hate comment. Yeah. Come and talk to these people. Yeah, come and talk to these yeah. people. That's brilliant. That's a great we've realised that you're yeah. And if they are, and they repeatedly repeatedly get this mm. pop up block them don't let them be on the app and i feel mm. like a lot of people feel like they they can send hate because it's anonymous they mm. think it's anonymous mm. i feel like that a lot of platforms should have sort of an id process 100 mm. so you, should, you, should you know to, yeah. who that person you should is. have to sign up with your yeah. id and 100%. again it's not it's not fixing the issue of like why people are mm. hating but it it will stop people from mm. hating yeah Definitely. because they'll be they'll then feel like it is them like it's responsible How is account account accountable. because i know that we spoke to a lot of people in that documentary but i'd love to speak to another psychologist about why why people are more likely to hate when it's anonymous because they would never yeah. come up to you in the street and say say the things that isn't it yeah mm -hmm. well there's there's like a, a a study that's been done before that proves that people you know it's slightly different like in groups yeah. will be more likely to hate so like if there was a group of people and um, oh it's like mob mentality yeah isn't it? exactly yeah. so I don't know if it's a bit like mob mm. menta mentality. Do you think it's got better or worse online, the hate, mm, like worse. over time? I think it's got worse because, maybe because people have like seen that so many people get away with it, but they just... Mm. But I don't understand, I would never get my head around it, why hate videos do so well. Mm. We have had hate Josh videos, they get like millions it. of views. Mm. How? It's the controversial videos. I spoke to a lot of people actually recently, one guy in particular that I won't, I won't name his name, but he was saying that, he, he posts actively uh, controversial content because that's in the mm. comments, people like argue with one another and that's how you get views. Mm. Mm. There's been a big thing about it because Facebook got pulled up um, in America about it, about um, their algorithm pushing hate because they knew that's how people... Really? That's awful. But again, stopping Facebook from doing it is not the issue. Mm. It's why it's, do people yeah. enjoy arguing like yeah. that? But I I do, do, yeah, go on. Oh, sorry, <laughs> go I feel on. like we're going to say the same yeah. thing. I do feel like Facebook should still be... Like, it is their platform. They should yeah. be held accountable yeah. as well because they should protect their users. Will you, um, will you let Oakley on social media? And if so, when? I feel like we can't stop him no. when he wants to because, mm. you know, it wouldn't be fair because all of his friends are going to have yeah. social media yeah. and stuff. But I do feel like we'll be much more cautious and make sure that his account is private and like monitored. And yeah, you're going to be like the mums. You'll be like, I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rather than him yeah. showing yeah, us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I what can't believe it's going to be old one day. Go on TikTok and all that. There'll be there'll so be different crazy. apps by then. Yeah. There will they'll be. be. They'll be crazy different. They'll all be yeah. like AI and all kinds. of Oh my stuff. gosh! Yeah. Like it'll be so. Different. You'll probably just like blink, like, blink, yeah. and they'll be yeah, yeah. Literally. What do you think? We've talked about AI lately. What do you think about AI influencers? Have you seen them? No, I've seen some. What is it? They're like not real influencers. What a they? robot influencer? Yeah, like um. Like a really, really good CGI image of this person. I forget her name. There's a really famous one in America. Well, Rebecca? I don't know where she, uh, Making that up. No, because I always say Rebecca to everything. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, uh, maybe. I'll try and find a name after this. But she's I've seen got somebody millions. called September or something. Maybe. I've never seen this. But it looks like, it looks like you. Like so real. And, and it's just people commenting on her behalf. That's and like crazy. posting on her behalf. Wow. And loads of people have followed her. And it's this big thing of... Um, is it okay to have fake creators? Because mm. then you've got kids like following them, listening yeah. to these people. And they're not yeah. even real and It's not people. even them, it's a team of people. Yeah. And they look real. So real. Wow. Yeah, that is it crazy. Would be hard, it would be hard to know. It looks like a really, really good photo shoot, if mm. that makes sense. Really? I've never but seen But then do it. they make them look like like really, really beautiful. Like yeah. really, uh, so it's kind of yeah, it's promoting un unrealistic, don't agree with unrealistic yeah. things. I forget yeah. where it is as well. Um, maybe it's Australia. They've just banned like all filters. Really? On social media. That's good. I do yeah. feel like that is good. That's good. So really I mean, good. I mean, we're probably sound hypocritical, but obviously we've sometimes used filters, but really we shouldn't. We should no. really not. Mm. And ever since we've had Oakley, we have worn makeup a lot less in videos. Yeah. And I actually like doing that because it shows people, do you know what, it's, it's okay, it's yeah. natural, mm. embrace it. And we ne we used to film with makeup on no matter mm. what. Did you feel the pressure to put it on so that you looked good 
online. Mm. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we just felt like if we didn't, we get so many comments like, are you okay? You look so tired. Oh, and we get, we, we do that like all that. the time. Really? Yeah, you Even look now? so tired. Mm. Yeah. You're like, I am, I've got a bed. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that is literally what we, yeah. we think. Like, yeah. Of course we're tired. What do you think's next for you two? I know you've got plans. What's <laughs> next? Um, well, well baby number two, definitely. Yeah. We're hoping to, I mean, can we say what we're hoping to yeah. do? We're hoping to do like a book series mm -hmm. um, for kids mm -hmm. of, because um, all baby books are just heterosexual couples yeah. um, that are white, you know, two kids, happy family. Mm -hmm. They're all just, mm -hmm. you know, so they're not inclusive at no. all. And we just want to bring out a book that books or a book that is inclusive books. and shows, you know, like diverse families yeah. because it it's just, it's needed, definitely needed 100%. out there. Was it super, super hard to, to find those books right it's now? Hard. It's hard we, we for haven't. Everything. I don't think we have one book in this house that's really like mm. a same-sex couple. I love or... Miss Rachel so much. I mean, she's amazing, but like every time it says, Dada, can you say mm. Dada's name? Fast forward it. And I mm. wish there was just something where you like, I don't know, I it's really hard. Think that you need, it's really hard. If we're gonna educate kids, and everyone's going to get used to mm. used to the the world we're living in now, and that people are all different. We mm. all these big channels and books and stuff they have to become more inclusive. It makes me sad that we have to fast forward things or like in a book. But like every single baby song as well is mm. like mum and dad, 100%, baby yeah. show, mum and dad. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like there should be something like somewhere that you can go, like a website where you can download the mm. same song. But it'd be more inclusive. So like yeah. you could download it and it's yeah, like dada great. and dada or mama and mama. Or yeah. I think that's what's so amazing about you two, because I don't know if there are, but I don't see loads and loads of same sex couples promoting just their lives online mm. and showing how normal it is. I think mm. that one of the nicest things for me was your wedding. Like mm -hmm. going to your wedding. I said I said this to my family and my friends. If you ever have any issue with a same sex couple, yeah. you should have been at that wedding because it was Aww. the most love filled wedding I've ever it ever was. been to. Like everybody was so happy, <laughs> yeah. loving the day. And how like I, I mean this in the best way possible. It was just like a normal wedding. Like mm, yeah. I think everybody thinks like it's gonna be this different thing. Mm, yeah. And that's what I like about your channel and about like, you know, doing a book and all this kind of stuff that you're you're promoting is it's it's normalizing it mm. and kids need that yeah yeah looking back when we first got together we were scared to even hold each other's hand in public really? we were texting we were so each other scared. in 2015 like when we meet up should we hold each other's hand mm. like or or do you think like we can't do that because like yeah. we had to think about that yeah. which is really sad mm. and i know it just it was yeah it didn't feel natural i feel like it felt a long it took a long time for us to feel comfortable like even just mm. sitting like this like sitting in this position, we, yeah. we would be too scared to do it because we'd worry that like, I don't know, it would make somebody uncomfortable. We would really, and, and we were worried to tell our parents mm -hmm. and everything. And then at our wedding, it's like, why were we like, why were we yeah. scared? We're like, our family they are so said, happy. Were you, so you, you, were, you were nervous to tell your parents? I didn't tell my dad for, was it a year? Really? I, I, and then I didn't tell my dad for ages either. No, we, neither of us told our dads. For, we didn't tell our family straight away at all. Mm. Even though they were so supportive when they That's did find out. That's interesting. So you both told your mums first. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I don't know. I feel like I just so like feel dads like... Dads would have a different I feel like, yeah, maybe dads... Or yeah. like stereotypically dads are more like... I that's know. stereotypical though. That's what I mean, yeah. stereotypically yeah, but I think dads that's what, are more... Well, subconsciously, that's what I'm, mm. pretty, uh, I'm trying to think, because my, my sister's gay, I'm trying to think, if she. I think she told my mum first. Did she? Well. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing is my 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 uh, dad's side is quite religious. Mm. Yeah. So I think that was always quite a, a mm. sticking point I do feel like her. when religion comes into it, it is a bit harder. Really? Yeah. But now my, my grandma on my dad's side, who's really, really, really religious, loves my sister. Mm, yeah. But she didn't tell her for years. Yeah. Like years. Like she, she had like girlfriend after girlfriend mm. and she'd bring her to family events. <laughs> she'd just miss her. And she'd be like, oh, this is my friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then grandma would be like, okay. <laughs> like not even, like she yeah. must have known. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's like what we did though, wasn't it? A lot it? of our family though, we didn't actually tell, they just kind of realised. People knew, yeah. Even mm. my neighbour, do you remember the neighbour? Mm. I was like, to Hannah, my sister, oh, is Leah going out with Caitlin? And my sister didn't even know at the time. And then when we asked people, like, how did you know? They're just like, oh, you can tell. Last question I'm asking everyone. What's the number one tip that you've got? You mm. can give me different answers if you want, to having a positive mindset. 
<laughs> me to go first. Yeah, go on, you go first. Surround yourself with positive people. I actually find like looking at positive quotes really mm. helps mm. bring up a positive mood. Yeah. So I guess searching for positive things. Positive things. Yeah, searching for positive things. Yeah. Like even on social media, following positive people. That mm. is yeah. 100% the thing you've got to do if you're on social media. Mm. Yeah. I've learned that. If you go on socials and you just keep, you go, oh, God, that person's annoying me. Oh, why have they got such a yeah. great life? Yeah. But if you just follow, and I know the algorithm puts other people in front of you. Yeah. But if you just follow the people that inspire you and make positive change, social media can be a great thing. It doesn't have yeah. to be a negative thing. Yeah, definitely. Cool. definitely. On that, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you.